Yo, what is up? Welcome to Ninja Geek Games. In the distant future, in a galaxy far, far away, warfare is a thing of the past. Does this mean everyone gets along? No, not quite. But instead of risking whole civilizations, any interplanetary disputes are settled through single combat, where a champion starfighter challenges an opponent in tactical skirmish. Here, you play out this dogfight using only spaceships and daring skill. Starfighters Rapid Fire from Alley Cat Games is a 1-4 to four player action-packed game that uses real-time dice placement to activate shuttle systems to move your ship around the battle map, fire various weapons and take advantage of superior positions in a strategic and tense battle. The winner of the game is the pilot who was able to destroy the opponent's ship. Let's take a look. Each pilot has their own shipboard or command centre that represents a multitude of systems on the spaceship. These systems include various weapons for attacking, drives for ship movement, and shields for recharging your defences. The shield display, um, displays your shield, and the ship's hull integrity is represented by a number of tokens. The HUD area is essentially your cockpit that dictates the number and type of systems that you can activate on your turn, and this is your ship pilot. It has no game effect, but looks awesome. Each pilot has control of a number of dice of three colours specific to either weapons or operations or a wild type and two homing torpedoes that they can make use of. Lastly, this little dude is your ship miniature. You're going to want to look after it in order to win the game. The battle map represents a very small area of the cosmos and is made up of numerous spaces. During the game, each pilot will be moving around the board and engaging in combat trying to gain optimal positions to attack. There are also two wormholes present that the pilots can make use of so they can traverse the great void of space. So component wise, there isn't too much, but that does mean a quick setup. Each pilot gets a shipboard and miniature of matching colour, a few tokens for the hull and weapons and some dice, and that's pretty much it. The artwork is bold and thematic, and I really like the aspect of your character being a veteran pilot represented by a cute fluffy animal. Not really, these are hardened creatures with nerves of steel. Now, although the game can be played with up to four pilots, I've only played both solo and 1v1, but we'll discuss the mechanics for higher player counts later. The aim of the game is simple, outmaneuver your opponents and destroy them with your arsenal of weapons before they defeat you. The game offers dice placement for system activation with a tense pusher luck element, carefully moulded around tactical decisions and a little luck. At the start of the round, pilots will be frantically rolling their pool of dice where you can either assign them to your shipboard or re-roll or remove previously placed dice and re-roll those. Once satisfied or by force, pilots will then take turns activating the various ship systems where their miniature can move and attack, recharge shields or leave dice in place prepped for the next round. Let's head to the cockpit. The dice rolling and system assignment is an exceptionally fast-paced phase of the game. First, you need to understand where dice can be placed on your board. The weapons, which are lasers or torpedoes, can only have red dice placed. The drives for movement can only have blue dice placed and the shields have options for either colour. The single yellow die, however, can be placed on spaces of any colour in all systems. So, during the dice phase, I'll be rolling dice and assigning them to the various ship systems. Sometimes I'll roll blanks that are useless and these need to be re-rolled and at this point the different symbols on the dice are mostly irrelevant. From looking at my board it now looks as though most systems are activated. I have lasers prepped, shields ready to recharge and some dice in the drives for movement. But I have no commanders in my cockpit area to activate these systems and this is where it gets a bit tricky. To activate a single system I need a dice of specific colour showing the command symbol in my cockpit. Therefore, in order to activate my lasers and drives, I need a red and blue dice showing this symbol in the HUD area of my board. Now, there is only one command symbol on each of these dice except the yellow. It has three faces with the command symbol and as it's a wild, it can be used to activate any system. I know what you're thinking. <clears throat> Mind blown, but stay with me. When rolling dice, you'll likely have some idea of what systems you want to activate. If you desperately need to fire your lasers, then as soon as you roll a red or yellow command symbol, stick it in the HUD area. Note that even though both lasers and torpedoes are weapons, as they are separate systems, you'll need to activate each of these separately. This means you need two dice of relevant colour showing the command symbols in the cockpit. 
Now, you may also be thinking, why is this phase tense and exhilarating if you're just rolling and placing dice? Essentially, it's a race. You need to roll, assign, re-roll as quickly as possible because once any pilot is happy with their dice placement, they can shout fire and the rolling stops immediately. That pilot then becomes the first player in the ship activation phase and may gain some tactical advantage. Plus the other pilot may have some dice that they were unable to assign. That's just tough. It's almost like a crawl initiative phase and I love it. It causes panic, mistakes, or better yet, a fantastic push your luck element where you need to decide very quickly whether you can shout fire or risk a few more rolls before giving advantage to the other pilot. What this does is replicate very well the fast reflexes required to be a starfighter. And being an expert space pilot myself, I can tell you that's true. So you have systems prepped for combat, what next? Starting with the first pilot, each player takes turns activating one system on their shipboard, but only if they have command dice available. To move around the board, you'll need to spend dice from the drive system that allow you to move one space or rotate, and you can carry this out as many times as you have dice. You'll need to activate this system to evade torpedoes, use wormholes, or get into combat range. Lasers are fired by spending assigned attack dice. The more dice you roll, the greater chance of success. Assigning dice to the system target area increases their range across the map, and damage can be bolstered with the overcharge, so you have a difficult decision here. Each ship has four shield areas you can attack, where any hits remove shield tokens from the enemy craft in that facing, eventually removing hull tokens if you break through. Torpedoes can be launched, but you must first fill their system requirement to fire, and these will target the enemy, moving ever closer each round and do more significant damage. Unfortunately, hull damage can't be repaired, and as more of these tokens are removed, your ship gradually loses power, giving you less dice to use in later rounds. However, your shields can be recharged, protecting your precious hull. Each time this system is activated, a reactor token is removed, making this action more expensive with each use. So, as you can see, not only do you have a tense and reactive dice rolling phase, competing for both adequate system activation and speed of placement, you'll need to make critical decisions during activation phase based on what's available to you from your rolls. Do you bolster the damage of a single laser, or aim to roll more dice to increase the chances of a hit? You can lay homing torpedoes that give some respite and then force the enemy to recalculate their actions such as movement, however, these can be destroyed with lasers. But if your ship shields become depleted, you must look to recharge or change your facing, hiding your weakened side, because if your hull tokens are completely removed, you're destroyed and lose the game. For an advanced variant of the game, and to introduce a little asymmetry between players, the reverse side of each player board shows a unique system that the pilot can utilise. I won't go over every distance, but each ship will now have multiple system changes that include weaker torpedoes but easier to deploy, specific movement requirements, or boosted versions of your lasers. These are great, and I thoroughly recommend using the upgraded versions of the ships once you've got the hang of gameplay. Starfighters can also be played at three and four player counts. The former is played as a free-for-all, and at four, you play in pairs alternating between teams for system activation, where the board looks to become quite busy with ships and torpedoes. But the game also includes solo play, where you need to defeat the evil Ogard by destroying the Starbase and associated drones. The Starbase is represented by a small token on the board that can rotate during play and a large sideboard showing the shields and hull integrity. The game introduces real-time play here where each round you have a limited time to roll and allocate dice, and this reduces as the game progresses. If you can beat the time in the rolling phase, you become the first player. The AI uses a small deck of cards to dictate actions such as deploying drones that move and fire lasers, launching torpedoes that will home in, as well as firing lasers with increased range and even death rays. The Starbase will also fire an EMP each round, potentially knocking out your shields, so your movement and placement becomes very important here. Solo play is challenging and requires tough decisions to be made, but provides a rewarding experience, and I like the concept of seeing how the Starbase will activate before you start rolling dice. For a small box game, Starfighters provides fun and exciting combat, a need for quick assessment with an exhilarating dice phase. It's thematic, you as a pilot with the ship's control systems in your hand, but you may not be able to do everything planned because another pilot took initiative before you. <laughs>
Although there is a push your luck element to the game, you do have to employ a good level of strategy with regards to ship facing and the properties of your attack. The rules are well written, with good examples of gameplay and the games I've played typically last no longer than 30 or 40 minutes. Replay value is quite high, even at solo play, especially when using the advanced ship boards which are awesome. If you're looking to jump into the cockpit of a starship in single combat in a fast paced game, then certainly check out Starfighter's Rapid Fire from Alley Cat Games. This is Ninja Geek Games, thanks for watching.